Marcin, it's, it's amazing how uh, I think Eureka Forbes' journey from what it was. I still remember, so I'm obviously in one of those decades when I started. Um, the, the Eureka Forbes man coming into the house and became part of the family from there too. I'll give you my personal experience. I actually did not have an AquaGuard uh, about six or seven months ago. And my water purifier failed. So I logged in a complaint and literally within 30 seconds, the first call I got was from Eureka Forbes. And since then, of course, I've switched because the other company is still to call me, so I haven't gone back to them. So I had a 30-second call from Eureka Forbes and switched to AquaGuard. So I've been very happy with that since then. So I just put down, I was just listening to what you were saying, and um, I was thinking maybe, you know, I will shift the conversation a little bit to slightly softer aspects of, uh, of the digital transformation that companies are going through. And I think in keeping with the topic that uh, why are organizations so worried about making this big leap. So they're going in little steps and taking baby steps into it. But I think you've really made this transformal journey pretty, pretty well. So a thought that comes to mind is the fear of organizations and the staff within organizations that, you know, when you embark on such a digital journey, is technology going to replace human assets? is a worry that many organizations go through. And that also stops them from making big leaps so that they don't have to deal with the larger problems of people bringing these concerns to the, to the forefront. How did you deal with this? I think you will need So, no, I have okay. a, I, so, so this is really, uh, this slide actually encapsulates the answer for you. Um, technology is going to come. Um, it's either going to make you extinct uh, or it's going to make you more potent and more virile. And I think uh, the way we've looked at it, um, there are certain things within your control and there are certain things out of your control, right? So your circle of influence, circle of concern. What you can control, you can control. What you cannot control, I think you would be stupid if you try and do things in the old way when the world has changed, right? So as an organization, we've decided, we've moved forward, we want to embrace new technology. And we're doing it in the most human way possible. So how do you marry? Because at the end of the day, you still want that Eurochamp to come in. You still want him to physically come and install your purifier. You still need him to give you the human side of the story of, 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 of who else has one, how the service network works, when we can reach them. So we marry the two of them. We empower him digitally. And how do I see the business maybe three years from now? I think the team will continue to grow. And we will continue to embrace this technology in what we think is the best way forward for the consumer. It's very wrong for any marketeer to turn around and say, hey, this is how I look at it. I mean, that, that's the beginning of the end for any marketeer. The, stir, the story starts with the consumer. How does the customer want it? Does he see this guy as a value add or not? Then we, 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 we embrace our business around it. We change our model, we modify it around where we are. In, 1982, when we started, the word retail or shop was a bad word in Eureka Pop. Anybody who came in with the word retail was thrown out. You know, we are a direct sales company, we are this. Today, retail contributes to about 30% of our business, right? And maybe tomorrow it may contribute to 50% of our business. But our business in direct sales hasn't stopped because of the retail revolution. It's also grown. So both channels grow. Similarly with the mobile technology, we believe there's a new market opening up. There's a new opportunity opening up for ourselves. Can we leverage that opportunity? Can we sit there and say, okay, guys, the customer is spending more time on this little ubiquitous device than he's spending on front of his television screen. Do I spend, you know, so do I not take cognizance of that? Or do I sit there and say, okay, this is interesting news. Let me process it and think about it. We don't do that. We think so, we move it. So if I uh, understand you correctly, I think what you did was also look beyond mobile just being um, driving um, uh, the consumer on the one hand, but also bringing effic e complete efficiencies at your Eurochamp level. So integrating really the one Eurochamp to the other and understanding how that network can work a lot more efficiently. Is that something that uh, you empowered them that's, with, with that's uh, technology? That's something that we definitely yeah. looked at. Yeah, you, you kind of captured it. Yeah. Right. So uh, leading to that, I, I know that Eureka Forbes is one company which, which is very proud of the fact that a lot of people who started with the company when the company started continue to remain with the company and I've read a lot about that. How did, how did these people, the, the members of Eureka Forbes, 
transform themselves along with the organization. It, that's a really hard thing to do for people who belong to another generation to adopt technology in a way that they can really use it to the organization's uh, advantage. How did they make the transition? How did you help the, uh, the, the larger team to transform? Very interesting question. Nobody wants change, right? And the minute you bring in change for somebody who gets threatened by it, it's the first, it's the first area of resistance. So, the way we did it was we ran an incentive uh, for our guys to get tabs. That was the first step. So run an incentive, get your people starting to use tablets. This is, I'm talking about when tablets were still not, not there. We ran an incentive for our guys to get smartphones. So they felt that they've earned their phone to start with. So and then they have a smartphone, then they start fooling around with it. And then we push them an app and say, hey guys, what do you think of this? And then they look at it and say, hey, this is interesting. And then they start giving you ideas, and they get involved with the process. So the minute you say, Go ahead, this is what we're going to do, let's not do it, that's the beginning of the end. You've got to sell it in a non-sellable manner to your people. And this is exactly what we did. We said, you've got to earn your mobile phone. You've got to earn your tablet. You earn it as an incentive. You start using it. And then once you start using it and you're familiar with the technology, then you throw in something else, and you throw in a little bit more, and then you start asking them how they can use it. Not all of this came from guys in the marketing team. A lot of it came from guys in the field. They'll say, hey, boss, why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? And then it becomes a movement. So you were, you were not really tempted to overnight say that, you know, out with the old, in with all the mobile addicts who are like 15 to 18 years old, get them on board. And you know, a lot of companies are thinking that way as well, saying we need young people who are on mobiles all the time. They're consumers, but they may not understand the brands. But that's another fear that companies deal with. And you didn't really get tempted to do that and just switch over from the experienced lot to the mobile addicts. No, that would be a cardinal mistake. It would be a cardinal mistake for any organization to follow. If you, if you think that you know, suddenly you bring in a team of 18 to 24 year old youngsters and say that now I'm going to change the company, that's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. You need the 18 to 24 year olds to give you what's happening in the world today. You've got to apply that to your business. But to apply that to your business, you need the experience of the people that are there. So it's two different generations. It's two completely different animals. But never the twain need to meet. Never the twain need to meet. Except virtually. Virtually, right? And how do they see any human being? It's, it's, it's natural for any human being. If you see a benefit to you to help you do your business better or to help you improve your life, you will embrace it. But till you see that benefit, you'll see it as an intrusion in your life. Today, can anybody think of life without a mobile phone? You can't think of life without you a know, mobile Marzen, phone. You know, Marzan, I hear you, but it's also highly distracting to have these mobiles. And no matter how, what age you're in right now, you're distracted by it. I mean, I was, the earliest session was highly distracting also when the tweets kept coming up. And my, uh, I am Tarika, oh my God. I mean, the one thing I remember really clearly is I am Tarika. She's out there constantly. And I also read something, uh, I think was it yesterday or day Tarika before? Tarika is not sitting in the room, right? Tarika? <laughs> is Tarika sitting in the room? Well, she won't put her hand up now. She's tweeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I read, I think it was yesterday or day before, I read an article about an organization. This was front page, I think, Economic Times. There you go. Uh, there goes Tarika. She's coming up somewhere. <laughs> so, this article talked about um, uh, organ and, uh, a particular organization, didn't name which one, actually employing counselors to get their staff to spend more time at work than on shopping on e-commerce. So, the people in the organization's shopping rather than doing their work. and. People are get, and organizations are getting counselors to do that. So you don't face that problem yet. You, you don't need outside help to, to know your people because you know your people best, right? And the minute you bring in a consultant to tell you what you need to do with your own people, man, you know, that's the beginning of the end of your business. You don't, you, you, we, we know our people. We know everybody in the company on a first name basis. We know their wives' names. We know their children's names. Mm -hmm. This is the company we are. This is our culture. And when you work with people in that engaging manner, there's no threat. There's no threat. And if you create a threat, that's, that's wrong. Well, that's, that's why totally you're so rock solid. So I'm just going to ask you one last question before I open it out to the audience. Um, the, the entire platform and the entire positioning of Eureka Forbes has been on the friend for life uh, thought. And I think that's, that's a philosophy that's flown all the way through in everything you've done. From the time that the Eureka Forbes man walked into my house when, there was, when the security guards and cameras were not there, 
there was such a big human element to all of this. Now with the digitized world and consumers really using mobile and, and exploring what your products are pretty much virtually, how are you still going to maintain this human aspect going forward? So friendship has changed. Um, the heart of friendship remains the same. You don't, um, you now keep in touch with your friends through WhatsApp. You don't keep in touch with your friends by physically going and meeting the guy every evening like you used to do. You know, my son doesn't, um, he, he's more on his phone than he is on physical interactions with people. But does that mean he's less friends with them? Obviously not. So the medium of communication has changed, but the essence of it hasn't. Friendship is friendship. Whether you employ it, and, and, and what is friendship at the end of the day? It's about how, as an organization, we can fulfill the needs and the health and hygiene needs of our customers. We provide them with the best solutions and the right products and the right trust. We have a trust index of over 93% with our customers, 93%, which I think is, is you know, phenomenal for any other brand. But at the end of the day, technology is not, it's not, it's a medium. It's not the message. The message and the medium have to be different. Technology can be the enabler to that message. But you got to, the, the core remains the same. So friendship and friend for life was, is, and will always remain our tagline. It is integral to our logo unit, and it will never change. Eureka Forbes, your friend for life is the logo, right? Having said that, how does that manifest with mobile technology? How can I change it? How can I help him be his friend and tell him that he needs more water than every day? How can I tell him that he's drinking the right kind of amount of water? How can I tell him that, listen, it's now easy for you to get in touch with us, through the mobile phone. A friend is just a call away. The guy who picks up the phone, for example, in our call center, is a completely, you know, we have a call center called Euroable. We have about 100 people there. Every single one of them, every single one of them has a physical disability. Has a physical disability. They don't get any concept of any opportunities in life. We hire these people, we give them an opportunity to make a living for themselves. And they, they work in this call center called Euroable. And in, through this Euroable, so when he's picking up the phone, he feels the pain of the customer. She feels the pain of the customer. She is the friend, that is. So everything manifests itself, not just by one medium, but exactly how you do it in a surround manner. And you've got to think of it from a holistic perspective as, rather, as opposed to just one simple thing and say, OK, now the mobile has changed, and now friend for life is completely different. The core must and always remains the same. That's where we are, that's where we were, and that's where we will always be. And uh, Marcin, last one before you get up. How addicted are you to the mobile? Be honest about it. You want to know the honest truth? Yeah. I spend more time with the mobile than I spend with my wife. <laughs> oh, no. So that's going to get a lot of tweaks from Tarika now. <laughs> but, but, but the fact is that I'm completely addicted to the mobile phone. I, wake up with the alarm from my phone, I, it's, it's there next to me. And if it's away from me for more than, you know, if it's away from me for more than two and a half seconds, I get the jitters. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm one of those guys who's totally addicted. Yeah, uh, very soon, I think in schools, when you had that story, I don't know how many of you remember about the king and he had his a soul in the parrot, that story is going to change a little bit. It's going to be the king and the mobile, and the soul is going to be in the mobile, not the parrot. Thank you so much, Marcin. It was Thank lovely you. chatting with you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thanks.